Hi buddy, this is Mr. Fowling, and this is Cookie Monster. Remind me in class to tell you how Cookie Monster can make a happy day for all of us in class. Um, and welcome to podcast 6.3, isn't it 7? I don't remember anymore. Um, it is 6.3, I think. Uh, we're going to do heat and stoichiometry, plendo, which you'll learn that wonderful word, and energy and bond formation and bond breaking, and percent yield, which I think I might have forgot to put on this podcast. So let's go ahead and start. In combustion reactions, the products are more than CO2 and H2O, and we talked about that, this in my class before. Light and heat are also products, and heat can be given a coefficient. Light can too, but we never do it. So, so for example, heat comes in the form of energy, and it can have 55 kilojoules of energy. So much heat is released when 75 grams of aluminum react. So 75 grams of Al times dividing bar, grams of Al, and always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. And one mole of aluminum. And little g stands for grams. And little g stands for, go to the periodic table, times dividing bar. And then moles of aluminum on the bottom. And heat is what I want. So I want to get it into that. Now, normally I always have to go through moles, but I don't need to go through moles of heat. Because a mole is a group of particles, and heat is not a particle. So one mole, not one mole. So I have moles over aluminum. And I need an equivalency here. So see how that's 2, and this is 55? So 2 moles of aluminum will give you 55 kilojoules, which would give me a reason to look at my calculator. There we go. OK, so 75 divided by 26.98 times 55 divided by 2 is 76.36 pigs for kilojoules. How many grams of iron form if 125.5 kilojoules of heat are formed? So I'm looking for iron, right, and to heat, OK? So 125.5 kilojoules times dividing bar, kilojoules on the bottom. And I want to go into iron, so moles of iron. And I need an equivalency here. So 3 moles of iron will give you 55 kilojoules times dividing bar. Now I want to get grams of iron. So moles of iron and grams of iron. One goes with moles, unless it's coefficients or kilojoules. And little g stands for grams, and little g stands for go to the periodic table. You get 55.85 grams of iron. So 125.5 times 3 divided by 55 times 55.85 is 382 grams of iron. So how much heat is required to use 58.6 grams of potassium chloride? Hey, we used that one before. And let's do that. 58.6 grams of potassium chlorate. Potassium chlorate. Potassium chloride. Hey, that's chlorate. So potassium chlorate is KCl3. And then I hate you grams of potassium chlorate. And go to moles of potassium chlorate. One mole, and then go to the periodic table. Uh, potassium is 39.10. And chlorine is 35.45. And then three oxygens would be 48. So add them all up. 39.1 plus 35.45 plus 48 is 122.55. 122.55. So that's the mass. And I'm trying to go into heat. Here's heat. It doesn't matter that heat's the reactant. We're still going to go there. Okay. So now I'm going to get moles of potassium chlorate, KClO3. And go on to kilojoules of potassium chlorate. K, well, not kilojoules of potassium chlorate, just kilojoules. Moles and kilojoules, we need an equivalency. And two of these would equal 195.3. Two moles of potassium chlorate, 195.3 kilojoules of potassium chlorate. And that's what we're looking for, 58.6 divided by 122.55 times 195.3 divided by 2 is 46.7. So if you notice, these are nice because it's one step shorter. You don't have to go through moles and then something else. You just go through the other part. So 9.87 liters form. How much heat is required? So we've got liters of O2. So now we're going to go from liters into kilojoules. And this is my goal. So 9.87 liters of O2 times dividing bar, liters of O2. And I want to go into, I'll just go through moles, moles of O2. One mole and 22.4 liters equals one mole. Times dividing bar, moles of O2, and I want to go into kilojoules. So again, I need an equivalency between kilojoules and moles. 
3 moles of O2, 195.3 kilojoules, 9.87 divided by 22.4 times 195.3 divided by 3 is 28.7 kilojoules. Isn't that nifty? Endothermic and exothermic. Endo means into. So endoskeleton means into the body. So you're an endoskeleton with a weird foot. Sorry about that. And endoskeleton means your bones are inside of your body. No, I'm just kidding. There's nothing I can do with that. Um, heat goes into the reactants. Heat would be on the left. So if I have reactants here, products. If it's endothermic, I would have heat over here plus reactants. It would feel cold. So if I have something that is endothermic, it absorbs heat. So if this is my finger, my really long finger, if I touch it, it's taking my heat. I think of it like the Dementors in Harry Potter taking your soul. So it's taking your heat. Okay. Um, so it'll feel cold. So you'll feel cold because it takes your heat. It absorbs energy. XO is opposite. The other thing is sometimes heat is shown as delta H equals heat. Okay. So for endo, delta H is positive. And for XO, uh, so I'll, let me do the, this. P means delta H is positive. Hey, that's the P. And L means heat is on the left. Positive left. And this means endothermic. So notice here, heat is on the left, so it's endothermic. Delta H is positive, heat is endothermic. And XO would be the opposite. Okay. So heat goes out of the reactants. So heat would be on the right for exothermic. All these would be the opposite. It would feel hot, and it would, instead of absorb energy, release energy. Bond breaking requires energy. So let's say um, we have, oh good, I'll make one of my little bone things that can look like hands. So let's say that um, you've got two bones in your arm, and I decide I want to break your bone right here. So I have just had absolutely enough of Keith. So I decide to punish Keith for being such a pain, I'm going to break his bone. So here's Here's Keith's bone, and to break Keith's bone, I'm going to grab it right here and grab it right here and put energy into it. Urgh, until snap, Keith's bone breaks. So you have to put energy into something to break it. Okay? So it requires energy to break bonds. Okay? Bond formation releases energy. So this means it's lower energy. And remember before we talked about babies. Oh, babies. Go, 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 go. What do babies like? besides hands. Babies like low energy. Oh, rock a -bye, baby. Nature loves low energy. Not high energy. Ah! If you shake a baby, it always causes brain damage or death. If you don't believe me, ask Alex. So does hockey. Percent yield equals part over total. And we've done part over total before. And we'll do it again. Part is what you got in lab. Total is what Stoic says you should have. Okay? So here we go. Calculate the percent yield if 550 grams of C7H8 makes 305 grams of p nitro toluene sorry, product. Whoa, that's kind of crazy. Let's hope this is balanced. C7, C7. H9, H9. O3, O3. One N. Woo, it's balanced. Isn't that nice? So 550 grams of C7H8, C7H8. And I want to turn it into the product. So when I do this, I take a reactant, I turn it into product, even though they told me the mass of the product. I'm going to compare that. So grams of C7H8, one mole of C7H8, and a little g stands for grams, a little g stands for go to the periodic table. 12.01 times 7, yeah, I can't believe it's calculated for that, plus 8.08 .08 is 92.57. And then moles of C7H8 and moles of C7H7NO2. And look, I don't have any coefficients, so it's one and one. And then moles of C7H7NO2. And I want to change that into grams. This is grams, okay? My goal is grams. Grams of C7H7NO2. So grams and moles. Little g stands for grams. Little g stands for go to the periodic table. 12.01 times 7 plus 7.07 .07 plus 14.01 plus 32 is 137.15. And this tells me how much I should get. So 550 
divided by 92.57 times 137.15 is 800, I have four six figs, um, 814.9 grams. So this is how much I should get. That's what math says I should get. But in reality, I got 305. Aww. So 305 is my part. And 814.9 is my total. That's how much I should have gotten. Times 100%. 305 divided by 814.9 is 37.4% yield. Now that sounds terrible, um, but actually it's not so bad. So sometimes that's what you get, and you're happy to get that. You do different things to increase your yield, but that's about it. So here, I've got 1.85 grams of aluminum and 2.12 grams of copper. So notice, again, I've got a reactant and a product. So I'm going to convert my reactant into the product and see how much extra I have. 1.85 grams of aluminum. Oh, let's check to see if I'm balanced. One aluminum here, two here. Oh, one copper, one copper, one sulfate, three sulfates. Okay. Three CuSO4s, three. Yeah, I'm balanced now. 1.85 grams of aluminum times dividing bar. Go to the variac table for aluminum. Always go through moles. Uh, a little G stands for grams. Go to the periodic table. Times dividing bar. Okay, I'm in moles of aluminum. And I want to go into moles of copper. So moles over moles use coefficients. Three copper, two aluminum, because that is the equivalency that exists from there. Um, we're going into grams. We're going to go into grams here. Moles of Cu and grams of Cu. One mole in little g stands for go to the periodic table. And copper is 63.55. One point eight five divided by twenty six point ninety eight times three divided by two times sixty three point five five is six point five four grams of copper is what I should have gotten, but I only got two point twelve. Oh, two point twelve is my part, and six point five four grams is my total times one hundred percent. So again, the lab just tells you. There you go. That's what you get. And that's how you know that's your part. So 2.12 divided by 6.54 times 100% is 32.4%, which is pretty piddly, but you know you do what you can. Review. Percent equals part over total. Total is from Soik, and then part is given. And Plendo, positive left endothermic. Treat heat like a reactant or product. Always go through moles. You're hot and you're cold, and I'm out of here. Too.